Hi friends, and thank you for joining us in this nightly read-along. Don't forget to ask your parent to subscribe so you don't miss any future chapters. Now here's Miss Kate with tonight's chapters. Chapter 25, Winslow is Curious. Winslow was increasingly curious, testing his curiosity most often with his mouth. He ate through two power cords, fortunately unplugged, and nibbled plastic buckets, newspapers, and jackets. He licked an oil spill on the garage floor, munched on the doorframe, and chomped on an old tarp. Winslow trotted from one thing to another, smelling and tasting. Every few minutes, he returned to Louie and bumped in with his head, as if to say, I'm still here, are you? He's like a little lamb, Max said. He follows you everywhere. He probably thinks you're his mother. What? Well, think about it. You're the only parent he's known. He doesn't even know what another donkey is. He doesn't even know that he is a donkey. He probably thinks he's a human like you. That night, Louis dreamed that his own parents were donkeys. In his dream, he thought, then I must be a donkey too. Winslow brayed as if in response. That sound. Maybe it came from outside and maybe it was in his dream. Louis could not be sure for he was still in his dream. Chapter 26. Winslow, Winslow. One morning, when Louis went out to the pen to feed Winslow before going to school, the pen was empty and the gate was open. Did I forget to close it? Louis wondered. I'm sure I closed it. I'm nearly certain I did. Did I? He dashed down the street and through backyards, calling for the donkey. Winslow, Winslow! His parents and Mac joined in the search. All along the street were calls of Winslow, Winslow! as they ducked in and out of driveways and poked in bushes. No Winslow, no sign of him, no sound of him. I can't go to school, Louie told his parents, but we have to go to work. Fine, but I have to stay and look for Winslow. Max said, I'll stay too. Louie and I can both look for Winslow, and if we find him, when we find him, Louie corrected. Okay, when we find him, then we'll go to school. They returned to the pen to see if the donkey had left a trail of any kind, but other than the normal patches of scuffed earth where Winslow and Louie frequently walk, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. I hope he didn't wander into the road, Max said. Don't think it. Maybe he's asleep in someone's garden. And so they searched, up and down the street, up and down driveways, crossing backyards and front yards, their calls for Winslow ringing neighbors to their windows and doors. You lose your donkey? Haven't seen any donkey around today. Who's Winslow? Is Winslow your dog? Louis ran to the next block, and the next, and the next. He called for Winslow louder and louder. Drivers asked if he was okay. Grandmothers came to their doors, peering out at this boy running through the neighborhood. Must have lost his dog. My dog used to get out all the time. I bet he's got a dog like that. Louis felt increasingly desperate. He begged the air, please, please, Winslow, please, where are you? He tried to imagine where Winslow might go. He could be wandering around, lost and afraid. Louis had a sudden image of sledding down the hill with Winslow and being tickled by his ears. The sledding hill? The snow would be long gone. The hill would be grassy, but maybe... Maybe Winslow had wandered that far. And so Louis went in that direction. He was tired now. He could barely breathe, his inside so full of fear and worry and pain. He could not imagine losing Winslow. He did not want to let his thoughts go there. He rounded the corner of the road and something caught his eyes. He glanced up to the top of the hill. Something or someone was up there. The sun was behind it and in the glare, all Louis could see was an odd lumpy shape. Chapter 27, The Bear. Once, when Louis was four or five years old, he had an encounter with a bear. He was outside in the yard when he spotted the bear lurking beside the oak tree near the garage. He wanted to scream, but could not. No sound would come out of his mouth. He wanted to run, but could not. His legs were numb. His arms were numb. He could not move. It was windy. Branches were whipping back and forth, twigs snapping. The bear moved closer to the tree. Help! Louis tried to shout, help! But he could only hear the scream in his head. Maybe if I play dead, the bear will leave me alone. Maybe it will go away. Slowly, Louis lowered himself to the ground and curled into a ball. He held as still as he could. His arm itched, but he could not scratch it. He needed to cough, but dared not. The wind blew, and the bear was still there, inching closer to the tree. Louis lay still for a long time, so long that he fell asleep. He was awakened by the bear pawing his shoulder. No, Louis shouted, no, please no. And this time, the words came out of his mouth. When he opened his eyes, he saw not the bear, but his brother, Gus, nudging him. What's the matter with you, Gus asked. It's only me. You fell asleep out here? Louis looked around, searching for the bear. There, he shouted, watch out, there's a bear. Gus followed Louis' stare and then slowly moved toward the bear. No, Gus, don't, don't. As Gus continued across the yard, Louis grabbed his arm and tried to pull him back. 
Gus, don't. But Gus kept going, and when he reached the bear, he lifted it up and turned to face Louie. This? Is this your bear? He was holding a puffy brown jacket. It's probably Max, Gus said. He's always leaving his stuff here. Louis was so relieved that he thought he would faint, but he was also embarrassed. He'd been afraid of a jacket. Don't tell mom or dad, Louis said. I won't, Gus agreed. One time, I was afraid of a moth. Chapter 28. Shh, he's sleeping. The memory of the jacket bare surface as Louis stared up the hill at the lumpy shape at the top. He was out of breath from his search for Winslow, and he was worried and frightened. He wished Mac were with him, but Mac had gone in another direction. Louis moved slowly up the hill. He was approaching from the back side, not the sledding side, and the sun was in his eyes. He thought he heard humming. Coming up the last stretch, he was able to see more clearly. Nora? She turned abruptly, putting her fingers to her mouth. Shh. Nora was seated cross-legged on the grass, with Winslow beside her. Winslow, we've been searching. Shh. He's sleeping. Very tired. It was a maddening thing about Nora and about most people who did not say much. Louis rarely knew what they were thinking or even if they were thinking. Sometimes he wanted to bore a hole in their heads and peer around inside. He felt as if he'd be able to see what they were thinking. Maybe the words would be written across a large screen in their brains. People who talked too much were also maddening to Louis. All those words pouring out of their mouths and gushing torrents, blah, 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 blah. Did you know blah, 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 blah? Did you hear blah, blah, blah? I felt blah, blah, blah. I saw blah, blah. When he encountered someone like that, he wanted to put his fingers in his ears to shut out the noise. And at those times, he wished the talkers were more like the quiet people. Maybe he would rather know less, not more. On the hill, when Nora said, shh, he's sleeping, very tired, Louis wanted to know so much more, but he was grateful that she offered at least those few words, and he was grateful, so relieved and so very grateful, to find Winslow. Chapter 29. Questions. Louis crouched beside Nora and gently stroked Winslow's head, relieved when Winslow's ears twitched. He was alive and he was safe. Thank you, Louis whispered. For what? For finding him, for saving him. I was so worried. Shh. Why? Why? Because he was missing. And I thought he was lost or hurt. He could have been run over or fallen in the creek or... Shh. All the while, Nora sat completely still, gazing down the hill. She was wearing a bright red sweater and her hair was piled on top of her head in a top knot. And she reminded Louis of a tomato. I have to take him home, Nora. We have to get to school. Winslow woke, blinked, turned from Nora to Louis and flapped his lips. You woke him up. You can't sit here all day. I guess not. Here, then. You'll want this. She handed Winslow's leash to Louis and raced off, running home. It wasn't until Louis reached his own house, opened Winslow's pen, removed his leash, and went to hang it on its hook that he thought, how did Nora get Winslow's leash? Louis was eager to see Nora at school and find out where and when she had found Winslow, but she was not in the cafeteria at lunchtime, and he did not see her among the crowds of students leaving after school. When he arrived home, Mac was kneeling in Winslow's pen, talking to him, but as soon as Winslow sensed Louis approaching, he waggled his ears and let out a loud gurgling, Winslow buried his muzzle in Louis's stomach and munched on his sweater. I wonder when and how he got out, Mac said. I'm not sure when, Louis said, but I think I left the gate unlatched. I must have. He was too embarrassed to admit he probably also left Winslow's leash attached. You ought to get a lock on this gate, Mac said. Anyone could come along and take him or let him out to run away. But he'd raised such, a, raised such a ruckus, he'd scare a stranger away. It bothered Louis that Winslow had run away. 